Hello and welcome to VCSP Tech Hub. My name is Artem and I'm Inside Cloud Solution Architect in EMEA. In this video, we'll discuss initial configuration of your first tenant, also known as company, in your Veeam Service Provider console. Please be aware that to successfully complete it, initial configuration has already been completed as well. If you're not confident with it, please check other how-to videos in Tech Hub. Veeam Service Provider Console is an extremely powerful tool providing outstanding capabilities for service provider of any size. It's famous for diversified and scalable architecture. However, the core idea of this video is to cover basic part and best practices of initial company configuration. In Veeam Service Provider Console, service providers' clients are represented as companies. A company is an organization that consumes services offered by a service provider. That includes deployment, configuration and management of VBR agents and client computers, management of Veeam backup and replication instances, and hosting on the service provider site clients' backups and replicas. To work with a client in Veeam Service Provider Console, you must you have to register a company account for this client. Each client that has a registered account in Service Provider Console then can easily access their client portal to view invoices, manage Veeam backup agents and backup and replication jobs and so on. In the administrator portal on your site, you can perform your following client management operations like create new companies, modify them, delete, disable, enable them and so on. To register a company account in Service Provider Console, you can do either creation a company through Service Provider Console web UI or just create a tenant in Veeam Cloud Connect server. Company data then is synchronized between Service Provider Console and Veeam Cloud Connect. When you create a company in Service Provider Console, an account of this company will appear as tenant in Veeam Cloud Connect and conversely. Keep in mind that to perform this task, a user that will create a company must have one of the following roles, even portal administrator, or site administrator. By default, management of the company through Veeam Cloud Connect Server is disabled when you just configure in Service Provider Console. So if you need to create it through Cloud Connect Server, just go and check the setting. So together, we will go through five most important steps and we'll onboard your first tenant. That said, let's jump direct to the UI of the solution and check what and how should be done there. There are two ways how you can start new company wizard from Veeam Service Provider Console UI. When logged in, you can go to the Getting Started Guide, scroll down to the step number seven, and launch it directly from here. As another option, you can exit configuration, and in the main screen, go to the client's companies and start the wizard from here. Please keep in mind that only portal administrators and site administrators are allowed to run it. Pay attention to the Company ID field. This field is used for integrating Veeam Service Provider Console with other third-party systems. You can just specify an ID that is assigned to the company in a third-party system and synchronize company data. The next step is one of the most important during the configuration, the selection of company type. Keep in mind that you cannot change company type after company account is created. There are two kinds of company types available, native and vCloud director. If you want to register an account that already exists in vCloud Director infrastructure, you can use vCloud Director option. If you need to create a new account in Veeam Cloud Connect server not related to vCloud Direct infrastructure, you can use the native option. We'll go and configure both tenants, however, we'll start with the native configuration first of all. On the user info tab, you have to simply specify the account for the newly created user as far as we use the native configuration and the site in case you have multiple Veeam Cloud Connect servers. As well, you we can specify if you want to not to enable the tenant to use the REST API of the backup portal, maybe for integration with third-party solutions, and to disable account automatically, probably based on the contract duration. We'll ignore this option at the moment. The next step is cloud resources, where you have to specify which resources will be available for the tenant. There are two types of resources that are currently available cloud backup resources 
mini cloud connect repositories where the tenant will be able to keep data from Vim backup replication and Vim agents and cloud replica resources the tenant can use for any kind of disaster recovery plans, replication, and so on. Let's check both of them. When you enable these options, you'll have more tabs available on the left side. In the data transfer out field, you can specify amount of the data that the company is allowed to download from the cloud repository during a billing period. The data transferred out quota is a soft quota and puts no physical restrictions on the cloud repository itself. At the backup resources step of the wizard, you can just allocate cloud repository resources to the company. A company to which cloud repository resources are allocated will be able to store their backups created with Vim backup replication or Vim backup agents. Keep in mind that provisioning of cloud repository resources requires a license that covers storing backups in the cloud. So here we can easily add additional resources and you can multiple of them. Specify the friendly name that their service provider will assign to the customer and the customer will be able to see in the backend replication Vim agent like cloud repository gold. The backend of this repository, meaning what kind of repository on the service provider side will be assigned. If you are not aware about how to create it as well, check other videos available on Vim Tech Hub. Quota and quota per VM saying 5, 10, and 15. The VM quota, workstation quota, and service quota is a soft quota as well and puts no physical restrictions on the cloud repository. When the company reaches the specified quota, VM service provider console will trigger the VM stored in the cloud repository alarm. You can customize this alarm in accordance with your own requirements. To enable additional protection for company backup files stored on cloud repositories, you can select the protect deleted backup files for number of days. Within this option, when this option is enabled, when the company deletes a backup from cloud repository, Vim Cloud Connect doesn't immediately delete the actual backup data. Instead of that, Vim Cloud Connect server will remove the backup from the tenant, Vim Backup Replication Console and Database, and move the backup files to the recycle bin. This functionality protects companies from both straightforward deletion of all backup files from Vim console and as well more sophisticated attacks. On the replica resources tab, we have to specify resources available for the company for disaster recovery scenarios and for replication of their virtual machine data. As far as we configure a company with a company type native, that means that we have to assign hardware plan to this specific company. The hardware plan is pre-created using Vim Cloud Connect server in advance. If you are not aware and don't know how to do this, please check our other videos in Vim Tech Hub. As an option, we can use a built-in network management capabilities for the failover, also known as Network Extension Appliance. When you're choosing this option, the additional step will be available on the left. Keep in mind that it's not a mandatory option and you can use your own software-defined network to be able to accomplish the disaster recovery successfully. When the option is selected, you'll have to create configuration for the network extension appliance, meaning name of extension appliance and extension network, how this appliance will be configured and managed using Vim Cloud Connect server. In our case, we'll use the default configuration, meaning obtaining address using the DHCP and the default name. As well, depends on the kind of service you'll provide for the customer, you can allocate the specific number of public IP addresses here. The same configuration can be done using the Vim Cloud Connect server. So we'll not cover it in this section, but we'll just run the configuration. At the billing step of the wizard, you have to select the subscription plan that must be assigned to a company. The cost of services provided to the company will be calculated based on this subscription plan. You can select an existing subscription plan in the list or just no billing options or create a new subscription plan. The no billing option is useful when you're using third-party billing solution and just would like to get the pure data out of Service Provider Console. In our case, we'll use the pre-created one, the gold subscription. At the bandwidth step of the wizard, you can specify tasks and bandwidth limitations for Vim backup replication job that write data to cloud repositories and cloud costs. Limiting bandwidth and parallel task processing for companies will help you to avoid overload of cloud gateways, proxies, and other resources of Vim Cloud Connect server. 
If Cloud Gateway Pool is configured on Beam Cloud Connect server side, you can enable this option and select the specified pool available for this specific customer. For example, this company will use MPLS connection to our infrastructure, meaning that we'd like to have the specified special gateway pool available for this tenant. If you're not aware about how and what the gateway pool is, you can check our other videos in Veeam Tech Hub. You can configure multi-factor authentication for additional security of user accounts. In Veeam Service Provider Console, this authentication method is based on the TOTP algorithm and requires installation of the authentication application on a trusted device, for example, on your smartphone. Veeam Service Provider Console supports all applications that use TOTP mechanism. However, we recommend Google Authenticator. At the notification step of the wizard, you can easily configure alarm notification settings for this specific company. Just simply switch it to on to enable alarms for the company in the client portal. Just review the entire configuration of the tenant. And if everything is all right, just click finish to finalize the creation. You'll be able to see your first company created in the company tab under service provider administrator account. As been promised before, let's create the second company, second tenant in our Veeam service provider console that will be assigned to our vCloud director infrastructure. So let's click new, specify the second company name, and the type will choose the cloud director. In user info, you don't have to specify directly username and password because this information will be taken directly from the cloud director database. So we have to specify the vCloud director organization and choose it simply from the list. That's the list of our organizations. We can choose the simple one as well, enable or disable access to the REST API and specify amount of resources that will be available for this tenant. Cloud on, cloud replica. You can mention that in backup resources, still the same steps, specifying the friendly name for the cloud repository, backend repository created on the service provider side, and the quota information. However, on the next tab, instead of choosing the hardware plan, we'll have to choose the replica resources available to this specific tenant. As far as it's part of the cloud director, we have to assign the virtual data center available for this organization. You can see that you can choose network extension appliance here as well. However, there are general recommendations to use VMware and SXH if available for the cloud direct infrastructure. Let's click next. We have to specify the billing information subscription that we did previously for another tenant, bandwidth, MFA identification, notification, and summary. Let's click finish and create our other account. So as we can see right now, there are two accounts available in service provider console. Both of them will have access directly to the portal from the user perspective. They will have some information about what's going on under their infrastructure and get the access. As been said, we can run the same configuration using Veeam Cloud Connect. So let's jump briefly to Cloud Connect to check what configuration is inside of here. It's our Cloud Connect server, the backend server that connected to Veeam Service Provider. And we can see that both of these companies been created here as well. The first company with a type standalone, it's the native one. The company that we created and specified the username and password, which is just part of Veeam Cloud Connect infrastructure. And the second company, which is demo, it's a part of vCloud Director Infrastructure. I hope this session was useful for you. Thanks for your time and see you in next videos.